Now, now that we've seen this, let's take a look at the example. It says, what is the oxidation number of each underlined element? For the first one, we have I2. So remember, which rule should we look at? Well, here we have a non-metal. We have an element connected to a copy of itself, and it has no charge. Remember, when we see this, the oxidation number is automatically equal to 0. For the next one, we have CS2O2. Remember, this has the formula X2O2, and cesium is a group 1A element. So this would be a peroxide. And therefore, the oxidation number of oxygen would be minus 1. Okay. And then finally, the last one here, I don't specify which one we want to find. I'm going to tell it to you now. It's carbon. I want us to find carbon. Now, I'm going to take myself out of the shock guy so we have more room to work this out together. Okay. So we want to find the oxidation number of carbon. The thing is, we never came up with a rule for carbon. It's nowhere in the specific rules. So because of that, we don't know what it is, and therefore it's x. Hydrogen, we do have a rule for it. When it's connected to non-metals, it's plus 1. This compound doesn't take the form of a peroxide. It doesn't look like this. It doesn't take on the form of a superoxide. It doesn't look like this. Therefore, oxygen must be minus 2 for its oxidation state. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to use simple algebra to help us solve for the missing variable. So we have one hydrogen that is plus 1. There's one carbon, which is x, plus there are three oxygens. Each one is minus 2. This equation will equal the charge of the compound. Now, the charge of the compound is minus 1. Now we're just going to solve for the missing variable. So we're going to have 1 plus x. 3 times negative 2 gives me negative 6 equals minus 1. The positive 1 and the negative 6 will combine to give me negative 5. We still want to find x, so we add 5 to both sides. So the oxidation state of carbon would be plus 4.